My name is Kain Sandogianus and today we are going to be continuing with module 4 of our SQL Server tutorial or full course 2019, actually August and September. So today we are going to be talking about stored procedures. We wanted to cover this in the previous class but we ran out of time. So we are going to be making it very simple. For now we, everything is very simple. So because I want everybody to follow along easily. But if you want me to move faster or something, let me know in the comment box uh, below. I'm going to end this presentation. Before then, I'd like to remind you to subscribe because if you subscribe, you kind of motivate me to continue making this lesson for you. And it also kind of helps me to see that there are people out there that are smart and they really want to learn. So let's go ahead to get started. So let me uh, stop this presentation. And so we've talked about views. Now I'm not going to be going back to views this time. So let's go to talk about stored procedure. We, to we told you that a view is like a virtual table, uh, saved as a, as a definition, and then you can select it and it gives you the data. Meanwhile, the data is right there in the table, not in the view. Now, a stored procedure is simply a query that is saved. So that one kind of is easy to understand. The reason that stored procedure is, is very important is that stored procedure, they are like functions that take parameters and perform operations and returns results. So once stored procedure is very safe, they are very fast, faster than the views and uh, uh, any other thing you might uh, may think of using. So to create a stored procedure, go to the programmability node, expand it and go to stored procedure. And just for now, there is no stored procedure in there. So just right click on it and say new and say stored procedure. Now, stored procedure makes some people to cringe because they think it's something really difficult. You know the name stored procedure, but it's really very simple. If you can write a query, it's simple. A query is simply save it and call it a stored procedure. That's all. So, let's, after now, we are going to talk about more difficult stored procedure. But take note that once you start a new stored procedure, just delete all those things there. They are crap. Just delete all of them. They are very confusing. I don't know why Microsoft have decided to make things scary. So simply give it a name, uh, uh, give this command create, create procedure, and give it the name. That is, well, that is one thing you need to do. Create procedure and give it a name. Let's call it uh, get student. Get student. This is how to name soft procedure because we are writing a get uh, statement. We want to get the list of students. And you say as, so these are the two things. After then, just write your query. So just say, select star from PBL to then. So basically that's it. We've created a stored procedure. Every other stored procedure we are going to be creating is exactly like this. The only difference is the queries you are going to be writing will be different. Now we've written a single line query, a select statement. But whatever you are going to do, you are going to be modifying the select, uh, the statement we've written as a query we are talking about. So I'm going to just, at this point, after writing, you don't save it by clicking on the save button. But if you if you click on the save button, maybe you want to save the text, uh, this text here. But it will not create a start procedure if you do it this way. So what you are going to do is to click on execute, this, this button here, execute. And you can see command executed or completed successfully. One thing you should do after creating a start procedure is to close it. Just close it, just just close it, just say no, don't save it again. Just after executing it and it executes, close it. The reason is because the, the, the creation of stored procedure is a command that is executed by the SQL engine. So once it's executed, a stored procedure is created. If you try to execute it a second time, there will be a problem, there will be error, because it will try to create, execute it again and create a stored procedure file uh, there. So if we go to stored procedure at this time, if I just right click and say refresh and you can see the view gets to them. How do we use this stored procedure? Uh, so we can just say right click on it and say execute stored procedure. So if I say execute it displays this dialog box for me. This dialog box is necessary because sometimes some stored procedures might require you enter a parameter and then this dialog box gives you opportunity to enter a parameter and then I'm going to just say okay. So at this point, it executes and it gives me the values here. Um, 
let's now select um, a stop uh, a, a uh, create a parameterized stop procedure. Let's say get student by ID. We want to give the ID of the student and return the particular student. So let's go to modify the stop procedure we created. But this time, instead of modifying it, so you see Microsoft is added all this bullshit. So I'm going to just take them out. But I, I could leave the first one. So let's just take all this. So I'm going to say create procedure and this time a get student by ID by ID. So we need to pass in the ID of the student. So at this point, uh, I think I could remember. So I'm going to say ID Vaca uh, Vacha or Vaca Vaca 50. I can't remember exactly the syntax, but I think this is what you should do. And from here, you say, uh, I think it should be at ID, at ID, at ID, Vacha 50. And then we are going to say at uh, this point, um, where, okay, student ID equal to at ID, sorry, at ID. So at this point, when we run this stop procedure, it's going to ask us what ID do you want? And then we specify this ID. In the same way, when you are searching uh, in a search engine or Google, you specify some parameter, then the system is going to take that parameter and put it into a query, uh, a stop procedure as it were, at the back end and use it. So in this case, when we run this procedure, it's going to tell us enter the ID, we enter it and it's going to use it to run this query. Let's now run this stop procedure and see if it's going to execute. Um, must be a procedure, get student, uh, create all that procedure must be the first statement. So we are actually going to be taking out this. So I'm going to execute. So everything is executed successfully. This is a parameterized stop procedure. Now let's run this stop procedure. Let me now show you that it's going to ask us for the parameter. So. Now go back to this place and go to refresh. So you have two stop procedures right here. If I now right click and say is acute stop procedure, uh, now it's asking me of the ID, mm -hmm. right? I could choose to pass a no value, but that is not what I want to do. If I say two and say okay, so it's going to return only a single record that has the student ID of two. So basically, this is how parameterized stored procedures work. So at this point, I'm going to allow you to play around with stored procedures and try to select by, by first name. And then in the next class, we now talk about different types of uh, clauses. For instance, the like uh, clause to select by criteria. Maybe you can use multiple uh, parameters in a stored procedures. I will look at a few other things you need to know. So I'd like to thank you for viewing. If you've not subscribed to my channel right now, click on subscribe and let me know who you are by leaving me a comment and we'll see you in the next class.